What's up YouTube? I'm Trent Weldon. Welcome back to the channel Weldon Aquatics. Tonight we are talking about worms. You heard me correct. We are talking about worms. We are going to go over how to culture micro worms, which I think is a great live food for smaller fish, guppies, bettas. Honestly, even my larger fish will go after them sometimes. But for smaller fish, this is a great life food and honestly is one of the easiest to keep and to get started. Really, the only the, the main thing you need to get started is a culture or even a starter culture from somebody else. And they're super cheap, easy to find. I was able to find mine from a local gentleman and he has some great information on how to culture these. So to get started, you need a container whatever container you want to put them in. I know people use cottage cheese containers. I like these uh, Ziploc containers or Rubbermaid containers I found at my local grocery store. I like smooth edges and I personally like clear containers so I can see what's going on. Now you can either use old fashioned oats or instant mashed potatoes. <clears throat> I know that sounds weird, but you need something to feed the worms with as also to kind of give them a bedding to you know, breed in and populate in. Um, I've never done the instant mashed potatoes. My starter culture came using oats. So I just continue to use oats. And if you're going to do the oats, you cook them following the directions. It is simple as that. Uh, I do add some extra. So I like the oat mixture to be a little more thick and not runny, is that I want to give a good foundation <laughs> for the worms to bed in, populate in, and not have any concern about that. Uh, talking with Michael from Bay Area Aquatics, he has cultured worms in both oats and mashed potatoes. Uh, I know Wild Fish Tanks has a video about culturing these in mashed potatoes. They both say that the mashed potatoes smell a little bit less than the oats do. Uh, personally, it's not a terrible smell to me. Uh, I mean, it depends on who you ask, right? I like fish. If I could have a massive fish room, I would. So if you have these in an area where they're not going to bother anybody, they're not going to smell them. And once you get the lid on too, nobody can smell them. So I don't think they're that bad. Now, if you ask my wife, they're the worst smelling things in the world and probably ultimately creeps her out because let's be honest, they're worms. They are moving. They're alive. They're worms. So like I say uh, for the oats purpose, you cook them as normal. Um, I think I've used, uh, for the main one, it's like a cup of oats. Like I'm actually going to cook like a full cup. you following the instructions for the containers I chose. I did a little bit more on these ones and I haven't seen a side effect from it. But So it, I would recommend between one cup to two cups depending on your size of container, whatever you want to do it. and. Like I said, I add a little bit extra oats because I do want this to be a thicker mixture. And I've I've experimented a little bit with both a runnier mixture and a thicker mixture, and I had better results with the thicker mixture. You know, as this kind of decomposes, releases the yeast and all that kind of thing, it will get runny already as it's just sitting. So I prefer a thicker mixture to make sure that my culture lasts longer. Now from there, after it cools down to room temperature, I put it in two separate containers and I, cause I wanted to experiment further with feeding the fish or feeding the fish, feeding the worms. So on your container lid, you need some air holes. This is the way I did it. This is the way that works for me. I literally poked holes with a knife. You're going to see people that will cut out a hole and put some, um, some, polyfill in there. You're going to see like a screen over this. However you want to do it, you just need some ventilation holes. I honestly was lazy when I first tried doing a culture and I poked holes really quick in with a knife and it worked. It worked really well. You just need something that's going to let some moisture out, not let any pests in and you know it's not going to just completely dry out your culture. So that's why I did this. Like I literally just poking holes with a knife and it worked. So however you want to do it, go for it. If you want to make them look pretty, you can do that as well. I'm not faulting anybody. So now for feeding the worms, I found two options, either using spirulina powder or ground paprika. 
Now, this is the purpose of I want to gut load these worms so when I feed them to my fish, they're going to get better nutrients, but both spirulina powder and ground paprika, as you can see, it's literally the McCormick ground paprika. They are both natural color enhancers for fish, and they're both you know good for fish. There's some argument that microworms aren't the most nutritional to fish. So this is one way I wanted to get some extra nutrition to my smaller fish using a live food. And I also did two separate cultures because I wanted to test to see if the microworms would culture and grow slash populate faster if they fed off of spirulina or paprika. But then again, you could also say that I didn't do a control one using none of these. So after you get your new container set up with your, either your oats or your mashed potatoes, you need to then get your previous cultures. This is where your starter culture comes in. Um, I honestly have done these with, a guy gave me a spoonful of a culture in a Ziploc bag and I got it to work. So you're going to then take your starting culture and you can see all the little worms cruising around the surface. You need to spoon out some of those to your new culture. That is the starting of it. You're actually transferring worms to the new one. As they settle in to the new container with the new food, they will populate out that. Uh, cultures generally last anywhere from one to three weeks, probably depending on how humid you have it, what temperature they're kept at. And you know, mine are literally kept around 75 degrees just because that's the room they're sitting in. So from this starter culture, I used half and half about to each new culture. I spread it out quite a bit. I wanted to jumpstart these really well. Um, with this one starter culture, I probably could have started six new cultures with no issues. And you'll be surprised at how often you can actually feed out of these cultures. You'll know they're populated when you'll see all the worms crawl up on the side of your container. And that's the simplest way to feed as well. I will swipe my finger around the edge of the container, collect a bunch of worms, dunk it in the water, swish it around, and you have fed your fish from your micro worms. It's a very simple process, and I've actually seen good results now using both spirulina and paprika. So it's something new, something different, and honestly, you close them up and you're on your way. So thank you everybody for joining me. I hope this helps. It's a fun live food you can do. They're cheap to find. And I'll leave some links down in the description below of where you can buy paprika, spirulina powder, as well as links to other videos from both wild fish tanks and Bay Area Aquatics to test out how they did their microworm cultures. And like I say, now it's a very easy project. And about five to seven days later, you will have a large culture you can feed from. So good luck to you. Thank you for joining me and we will see you guys in the next one.